Welcome back to Italy. We are taking the train from Rome to one of the most unique places in the world, Venice. When you arrive in Venice, most take the Vaporetto or water bus, but we are going to make our first taste of Venice something more spectacular. We're going to take a private boat. Back on foot, we are navigating the magical maze of medieval buildings, making up the city on the water and building up an appetite. We managed to find a hidden restaurant close to our Airbnb and discovered an amazing ravioli. Cheese and spinach ravioli served al dente. It's wonderful. It was so good, we will be back tomorrow for more. In this massive maze, we did find some dessert. Had to do it. This is the Rilato Bridge. It is about 500 years old and is also one of the best places to capture a sunset. These images are from my last visit to Venice. The area around the Rilato Bridge is prime tourist trap. It is crowded and full of merchandise that is not made in Venice. After stopping at one of my hidden spots to get a selfie with the Rilato Bridge, we continue to explore the beauty of this place. Next up is Piazza San Marco. This is the largest public square in Venice and the center of the Carnavali of Venice Festival. Well, it's been about four or five years, but it is so nice to be back in Venice. Twelve years ago, on my first visit here, I decided that I would not take a gondola ride until my wife was with me. Three trips to Venice later, we got to experience this romantic cruise together. We pass by the residences of Marco Polo and the legendary lover of Venice, Casanova. We floated through the excitement of the Grand Canal and the romantic avenues of the smaller side canals. We're in search for dinner now. After another amazing meal, we are out exploring this incredible place and we stop by one of my favorite quaint photo locations in the city. Here are some images from my last visit to Venice. We now have just one full day to enjoy Venice. Let's make the most of this. We are heading to the Doge's Palace. But first, we are stopping at one of my favorite grab-and-go walk-up places to get a cafe and a cannoli. Okay, on to the Doge's Palace. So something about Venice, when, it's, when you're a photographer, it is very, very challenging here. Almost all the rules of photography were completely out the window because there's, well, everything's at odd angles. Um, there's very, except for the ex exception of here under the Doge's Palace, um, repetition, which is usually an easy architectural element, can be very difficult to find. The canals are going in all different direction. They're so close together, sunlight has trouble getting through here. So you really have to be creative sometime and what type of images you capture. Yeah. Clock tower. I love it here. If you want any images here in uh, 
San Marcos Square, you, without a lot of people, you gotta come early in the morning. It's uh, 7.30. We're actually gonna try and get the Doge's Palace soon. But even at this time, there are people everywhere. But not as bad as what's gonna be in an hour. The palace is adjacent to the Basilica of San Marco. The Doge was the chief magistrate and leader of the Republic of Venice for over a thousand years. The nobility of the city elected the Doge for life. Built in 1340, the palace blew us away. Since most of my time in Venice has been outside, I was completely in awe of the decorations and the elaborate frescoes that adorned the inside of this mammoth palace. Room after decorated room awaited us through every doorway. The Chamber of the Great Council is one of the largest rooms in all of Europe. Yeah. Just to see this room is worth the price of admission. Unbelievable detail. You also get to walk through the Bridge of Size. So this is the famous Bridge of Size, and legend has it it got its name because this is where the prisoners would come across, and this is the last side of Venice they would have. After the palace, we took the opportunity to do something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, take the elevator to the top of the clock tower. This is the tallest structure in the city and can give you a spectacular view of the entire lagoon. All right, so everybody, we are at the, I think the oldest cafe in the world at 302 years old. Now, I discovered this place at Carnivale. This is what it looked like inside there during Carnivale with everybody dressed in their Baroque attire. It was amazing. But today, we're gonna do a, what are we doing? Cafe latte? We're gonna do a, a, a latte macchiato. Latte macchiato, latte macchiato. For those of you who don't mind paying a bit of a premium, stop by the Cafe Florian. This elegant coffee house is a favorite amongst those during carnival as they drink and dine in full costume. Alright, so I'm starting to struggle here just a little bit trying to figure out what it is I'm going to order because this stuff looks amazing. It is expensive, but I've been waiting 12 years to be able to have a cafe here, so I'm going to the prices are a bit high, and even higher when the string quartet is playing. But it is so worth the price to have a coffee in this fabled location that served the likes of Charles Dickens and Casanova. This is definitely not a large corporate coffee store. This place is for real. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Oh, no, I need sugar. Mm. And listen to who they start playing Andre right on Trey Bush. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Perfect timing. First cafe at the Florian. And Andrea's music is played. That's awesome. I might have to video that. This is one of those simple experiences that you remember. Your senses are treated to the sights of elaborate architecture, the aroma of the desserts, the taste of perfectly brewed coffee, along with memorable classical music. All of this in an incredibly unique venue. For a traveler, it is perfection. All right, top of the lump, they gave us a little candy. Chocolate covered coffee. Let's get you a caffeine fix. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah, it's really. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Mm -hmm. When we were planning this vacation, we had to sacrifice a day in Venice to give us more time in Tuscany. On the boat ride in, everybody agreed that we will come back here. Our 36 hours in Venice is not nearly enough. We only got a taste of what this place has to offer, a mere glimpse into the possibilities. There are many islands of Venice yet to be explored, each with their own unique atmosphere. 
As we cherish our last look at Venice on this trip, we know that we will be back, and I cannot wait. But on to our next stop, Florence. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. Next week, I will see all of you in the birthplace of the Renaissance. Renaissance.